I think when I look at being the example, there's a lot of facets of your life that can get clouded or put aside or put on a shelf. And we tend to, to gravitate towards what has the most urgency right now. And that gets all of our attention. And unfortunately, the other things in our life basically get put on a shelf. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. I am Ben Newman, and you know every single week I get fired up about the opportunity to bring you stories of individuals that have performed at the highest possible level. And Brian Roberts and I have known each other for over 15 years, so longtime friends. We have the opportunity to work together, to inspire together, and I'm excited because he's one of the sharp-dressed guys that, that I know, right? And uh, over time, we've been able to reconnect and now be able to do some unique things together. And you know this is not a lot about accolades, but one of the things that's truly unique, and we're gonna talk about this later, is that there's many people who go into leadership. And they go into leadership because maybe something wasn't working, especially in the financial world, as a producer, as an advisor, or they were doing pretty well. And they look at it as a, a way to enhance their career. But what is so unique about Brian is that he was performing at the highest possible level, top 1% of advisors, and decided the impact could be greater by leading his own organization synergy. So Brian, uh, more of a friend than, uh, than business, it is awesome to have you with us for the burn, so thank you. Oh, pleasure, great to be here, Ben, I'm excited. I, I wanna start um, on a emotional angle, which uh, would, would be no surprise, you would expect uh, that we would go there. Yeah. And there's so many accolades, you've had such a long trajectory of success and awards with the companies that you've been with. and But today is a special day for me, and I know the reason why it's a special day for me is gonna hit home with a lot of where your burn comes from today. So today is actually my mother's birthday. And you know my story very well, so many of you know my story well. And so my mom would have been 72 years old today, and my mom passed at 38, so it's just wild for me to think of you know, how many years she's been gone. I'm 41, I got three extra years that my mom never got. And as a result of that, every single day, I just, I approach life to give it my best. And I know for you, a handful of years ago, your life changed with your dad. And I know so much of your burn today comes from that experience being with your father, um, not being able to resuscitate your dad, and your father's in your arms. Um, you and I can go there because we've known each other a long time and uh, we're real dudes, emotional guys. So take me, take me there. Because when I think of the burn and I think of your heart and what's important to you and that experience and what you've, you've shared with me, I, I knew that that's where we had to go. Yeah, I, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, it's emotional. I can talk about it because, you know, the relationship that we had. Um, I think if I didn't have the relationship with my father, or we weren't as close as we were, you know, there'd probably be some regret. There'd probably be some, man, I wish I really would have done this differently. Um, but no doubt transformational in my life. I mean, when you, when you sit in that moment <clears throat> with somebody that you love and, you know, he, he died of a, a massive heart attack, we think, um, you know, it changes your paradigm. It changes the way you approach life. It changes the way uh, you know you want to be remembered, and it changes your habits and the things that you do in your life to really move yourself forward and move your family forward. And quite honestly, it really brings you know the future into the present. Like, how do I want to be remembered? You know, what are the things that I want to do in my life now to make a greater impact? And that happened. Been I was 39. I'm 43 today, and um, it really was the catalyst for me to move away from running a high level financial planning business that I truly loved, by the way, loved my clients. Uh, I loved the hunt. Um, I loved every aspect of it, but I really wanted to move more into something that I could take my God given talents and really explode that for a greater impact. And for me, that was leadership. I'd always had my, my toe in the water with leadership. Um, 
it excited me. I'm very passionate about coaching uh, and being coached because I know the people that I have worked with, what they've done for me personally in my life. So having an experience like that transformed the way that I approach life and further um, solidified that my path needs to be one that is inspiring people, bringing out the best in people. Um, so I, choose, I chose to walk away from my financial planning practice that was my baby. I'd put all my energy, time, and love into that to fully jumping into management and leadership on a full-time basis. When I hear you kind of walk through those steps and how your father's loss impacted you to establish more clarity, the words that then come into my mind are be the example. And one of the things that I really admire about you with as much as you take on, and always looking to take on more, we have a lot of conversations around that, is that you still keep in mind that you can have balance. So many leaders that I work with, they fight me. Balance doesn't exist, just take time off. And I think you and Kylie have been married 20 years. You know, Brock and Kendall, you are so committed to them. There's so many amazing conversations where when you talk about your children, I can see the emotion in your eyes, the intentionality around the time you're gonna spend with your children, whether it be at the lake or whether it be, you know, spending time with them, you know, off hours, right? And having that balance. But when I think of be the example, I think about how you keep trying to find more. And the example I'm gonna give you is because I'm really proud of you for this. You lost 23 pounds, right? When you could have said, are you kidding me? Like, Kylie and I are committed to our marriage. I'm committed to being a great dad. I'm running this organization. We're growing this organization nationally, right? Synergy's becoming a national brand. It's not just here in St. Louis anymore. You could have been like, dude, I'll eat what I want, forget about it. So why do you keep pushing this envelope to be the example? What does it mean to you to be the example? I think when I look at being the example, there's a lot of facets of your life that can get clouded or put aside or put on a shelf. And we tend to, to gravitate towards what has the most urgency right now. And that gets all of our attention. And unfortunately, the other things in our life basically get put on a shelf. And, you know, looking at my dad's life and, and hearing the things that I heard, you know, from complete strangers about my father. Um, was inspirational and when I look at where I want to go you know the husband I want to be the father I desire to be uh, the friend uh, the leader you know I think it really takes you know a sharp spear in all aspects of your life and one of the things that I parked on the shelf was my own personal health you know ironically enough my father passes of a major you know heart attack and that's the thing that I park on the shelf. So through your encouragement, through other leaders and coaches in my life, it's like, you know what, I need to bring those things that are most important to my life to the forefront, and I need to focus on them, be dedicated to them. And I always say, if it doesn't show up in my, if it doesn't show up in my calendar, it's not happening. So if I'm not intentionally putting those things forward in my life, there's always gonna be something else that wants to grab my attention. So as best I can, I try to start each day focusing on what are the things I need to do to sharpen the spear in all aspects of my life. And uh, I'm, I'm dedicated to having those as a daily part of my ritual and my routine. Um, so having that daily accountability to the things that are most important to me has really allowed me to you know, have the weight loss or to focus on that part of my life that really uh, took a back seat, unfortunately. And one of the things that I think was really cool through this whole crazy COVID 2020 year, whatever we want to call it, is tell everybody how many miles you were walking. Yeah, so uh, my life, like, like everybody else, was inundated with Zoom calls. So uh, as I'm grinding through Zoom and I'm sitting at our kitchen table, I'm like, man, this could be so much better. <laughs> like, uh, so I started walking and I would do my Zoom calls while I was walking, uh, get outside, uh, rain, sun, and uh, what I noticed was I kept going farther and I kept going farther and I was walking 10 miles a day and uh, five out of seven days a week I'm, I walked 10 miles a day. So you're talking about 200 miles a month. Yeah. You know, it's, and what's interesting is you found a way within your environment to do that. 
And I think for so many of us, we're looking for the excuse rather than looking for the way to get inside the environment. So I, I thought that was so unique that you said, I'm, I'm going to do it. And then it went to 10. I, I want to grab onto a couple of words that you said. You know, so oftentimes people say, I am. Uh, I believe in I am statements, okay? But an I am statement for the things you want to become, okay? What you just said was, I want to be a great father. I want to be a great husband, which means that you're still working on it. And, you know, people hear I am statements sometimes and they'll tell me what they've already achieved, right? So you could say, I am a great dad. Well, that'd be like you've already achieved it. And, and that goes back to what I said about the balance piece. And I would just encourage everybody. And it's why we do these burn episodes. And it's the little nuances that I want you to hear. And he's going to be mad at me for putting them on the spot like this. But that to me is the difference. Is that if we're going to lead an organization, we're going to lead other people, or we're going to have a conversation to hopefully make a difference in somebody's life today, right now, is to let them know those little things that you tell yourself, it's all the difference. If you already say, I'm a great, I'm the best dad. Well, how hard are you really going to work towards being a great dad? As opposed to conversations like we've had about raising kids and funny stories, tough stories, is I want to be, like I'm still working on it. And so I think that's really unique that, uh, that you take that perspective. A uh, couple more things. Yeah. What's the best lesson? So you're, you're a great leader. I mean, you hear from other leaders uh, within the mass mutual system that you're a great example of leadership. And when you hear something like that, I always like to, like to know, well, who's leading you, right? What's the best leadership lesson Brian Roberts has ever been taught? What would you say that is? I think giving or getting the gift of high expectations. You know, oftentimes as you're coaching people, as I'm coaching people, as we're all coaching people and we're all leaders, we often are gonna see things in people that they're blind to. We're gonna see that potential. We're gonna see that talent. We're gonna see something, some spark, something in that person that we can, we can accentuate and take to the next level. Oftentimes, you don't see that when it happens. I know it's transformational in my life when I had mentors that believed in me, maybe when I didn't believe in me, mm. or they saw where I was gonna go, even though I didn't have a clear vision for it. So it's seeing the potential in others and caring enough to give them that tough love and the gift of high expectations. I think when you come from a spot where you care and you truly love someone and you work with those people and they know that you know you may be hugging them or you may be choking them to help them get to the proverbial next level, I'm gonna give that person the gift of high expectations. And uh, for me, many people have done that in my life and it's allowed me to wanna push myself even further and there may be opportunities, Ben, that we have out in front of us that we're not even aware of right now, but that's why I'm so passionate about working with people and working with coaches, because those people just have a sixth sense to see a path maybe that I don't have clarity on right now, but they believe enough in me that they're going to invest the time and they're going to give me what I need tool-wise to help get to that next level by the gift of high expectations. This is pretty wild. So the last thing I was going to share, okay, and this, this, by the way, is one of the most, let me set the table for this. This is one of the most beautiful, all the offices I've been in the financial services industry. I and mean, there's a handful that have been really, really nice. This Synergy office is up there as one of the nicest, right? So we could have picked so many different places in this office to do this interview. And you picked your office, and you picked this spot, and you didn't know this, I didn't ask you for this. But a couple of weeks ago, I texted you a picture of the man in the arena. And you responded back with that picture of the man in the arena. So we didn't do this intentionally. I'm starting to get some goosebumps. It's kind of crazy how we do this. And this is how I wanted to finish our time together today. And you just said, give the gift of high expectations. It's almost welcoming somebody, get in the arena. And I remember when I was given the man in the arena and I carried it in, in my pocket for probably over 10 years. And the credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes short again and again, knows the great enthusiasms, great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause, so that this place shall never be with those cold and timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. So somebody had sent it to me. I got all fired up. I sent it to you. You sent that back. And then you just said about the gift of high expectations. I was going to talk about this anyway. But that's one of the things that I would say is so unique about you is that you choose to stay in the arena, 
you bring other people into the arena with you and those things are building a legacy and so where I'd love for you to take us just to finish is what does that word legacy mean to you your father's meant so much to you your children Kylie mean so much to you I know the organization but you being in the arena you welcoming others what does legacy mean to you we have to leave things better than we found them. I truly believe that. You know, I'm working exceptionally hard on myself. Um, I'm engaged in servant leadership. I think that is the most perfect description of, you know, my mantra and what I want to strive to do each and every day. Um, the more that we do for others, that's legacy, right? Nobody's going to remember. Um, or very often they won't remember certain accolades or, or trophies or things that they acquired over time. What they are going to remember is how you made them feel in your time together. They're going to remember that time that you picked them up and dusted them off. They're going to remember that time that you pushed them a little bit further and pulled them along and helped them. And when I think of legacy, I think of people that mean the most to me in my life and have the biggest impact to me in my life. That's what legacy means to me. And servant leadership I think is it, it runs parallel with legacy. I mean, the, the greatest servant leaders of our time have legacy. The greatest servant leaders of our time are the ones that are remembered well beyond their time with us. So when I think of legacy, I think of servant leadership and what are the things that I need to do to embody that. It's inspiring. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Burn. I have a couple action steps for you that are coming from Brian, not from me, but uh, I know he's not going to be challenging you on this show, so I'm going to do the challenging. What are you currently doing to serve? Right? Serving is so important. So what are you right now, right? You got a few months left in the year. What are you doing to serve others? What are you doing to give more of yourself and make it bigger than you? And then I would ask yourself, are you being an example, right? I, I highlighted Brian in all these areas where balance does exist, drives me crazy. All those people say it doesn't exist, just work hard and take time off. Are you truly being an example in all areas of your life? When you look in the mirror at the end of the day, can you say that you're truly giving it everything that you've got? Because at the end of the day, that's between you and you. And I know that's important to you when you look in the mirror. It's important to me when I look in the mirror. And I want it to be equally as important for you when you look into the mirror. The other thing I'd ask you, this has been such an impactful conversation. Share this with one person. Maybe that's the way you serve. Share this with one person where the conversation might connect them deeper to their story. The parent that inspired them. The family that inspires them. And continue to join us every single week for The Burn. I appreciate every single one of you. And Brian, I appreciate you so much, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it.